Would I be the asshole for refusing to return my dog? Background. I, 27F, was pretty good friends with Luke, 26M, for a while. Luke had adopted a four-month-old puppy named Dexter. Shortly after adopting Dexter, Luke got into online dating, and it wasn't long before he met Allison, who lives in another state. For a while, Luke and Allison had a long-distance relationship. About a year into their relationship, Luke and Allison decided to move in together, and Luke started making preparations to move to Allison's state. The problem is that Allison dislikes dogs and made it clear to Luke that if they move in together, that Dexter would not be welcome. Luke talked to me, and asked me to adopt Dexter, and I agreed. He's a really sweet dog, and he got along great with my other dog. So Dexter moves in with me and shortly after Luke moves to Allison's state. For about a year, I sent Luke regular messages and updates on Dexter. But after a while, Luke quit responding to my messages, so I stopped sending them. For the next two years, neither of us has any contact. Story. About a week ago, Luke reached out to me completely out of the blue. He and Allison broke up and he wants to move back to my state. I replied, telling him I was sorry to hear about their breakup. Luke then wrote back saying that after he moves back, he plans to look for a dog-friendly apartment and then take Dexter back. I was shocked. It has been a little over three years since this all happened. Dexter has been living with me this entire time and is now bonded to my other dog. Luke hasn't seen him once. After I stopped sending updates, he never once reached out to see how Dexter was doing. Now all of a sudden he wants him back. I want to write Luke back and tell him that Dexter is staying with me. But I was talking to my sister about it, and she mentioned that Luke is likely going through a hard time, ending a serious relationship, and that he probably needs Dexter more than I do at this point for emotional support, companionship. So now I really don't know what to think. Would I be the asshole if I refused to return Dexter? Update. Wow. Thank you for all the responses and the advice. This just reaffirms that I am doing the right thing by keeping Dexter. Anyway, I ended up sending Luke a long message earlier today. I basically told him that I would welcome a visit from him, but also made it clear that Dexter was staying with me, and that I would absolutely not consider rehoming him to Luke under any circumstances. I also told him that once he got himself better established, I would be happy to help him find a new dog. I even told him that I had some extra leashes and bowls that one would be happy to let him have for his new dog. Luke just wrote me back and basically cussed me out, called me all sorts of names and accused me of not caring about his mental and emotional well-being. He is threatening to take me to court, and I told him I'd see him there. I am in the process of gathering all of Dexter's paperwork together. This is absolutely my hill to die on, and I will take this as far as it needs to go to ensure my dog stays with me. Thank you again to everyone who responded. Why WNBTA Dexter is your dog? Removing him would be confusing and cruel. Lose the friend, keep the PPOCH. Not the asshole. The dog is yours. You aren't a kennel, but the dog's owner. Not the asshole. He asked you if you'd like to adopt Dexter. Dexter has been your dog for longer than he was Luke's dog. Please make sure you have Dexter Murko chipped and keep proof of ownership, like paying vet bills. If you have written acknowledgement from Luke you, adopted, the dog, keep that too. Dexter is your dog. Be polite but firm in your refusal to, return, him. More like re-re-homing. Luke is not factoring in the emotional upheaval that Dexter will suffer if he changes living environments again. It's not fair to the dog, and Luke can surely provide a wonderful home to one of the many shelter dogs that desperately need a home. Not the asshole for not giving your dog away. Why WNBTA? You have cared for that dog for three years. He is your dog. Luke didn't even bother responding to status updates about the puppy. Please don't give the dog to him. Not the asshole he chose that girl over the dog. End of line. Not the asshole. He's a dog not a toy that Luke can pick up and drop whenever he feels like it. Dexter has lived with you for far longer than he lived with Luke. It would be cruel to him if he had to completely adapt to a new environment now. Not to mention what it'll do to you and your dog. It's not about who needs him more, it's about what's best for Dexter and that's the home he made with you the last three years when Luke chose a relationship over him. Luke will just have to find some other form of emotional support. Not the asshole. This is your dog. The plan was never that you would return Dexter. You have had the dog for three years. He hasn't been regularly updated on the dog in two years. The dog has bonded with you and your other pets. It doesn't matter who, needs him more, this is your dog. 
Am I the asshole for limiting the amount spent on wedding attire? I, 32 female, have been getting crap for this event for years. It would be nice to put it to bed. So way back in the day my brother-in-law got engaged. He chose my husband as one of his groomsmen. Awesome. Super happy for brother-in-law and his fiancée Jane. The wedding was to take place out of town, about a two hours drive for us. No worries. Then brother-in-law wanted his bachelor party to be the night before his wedding and his wedding party to crash at a hotel near the venue where everyone was staying. Which meant husband would be gone the morning of the wedding and I would be alone getting myself and our two small children, five and two, dressed and ready as well as making the drive by myself. Not great and by the time we were told of the plans every hotel in the remote area was booked up. But my husband was expected to pay for his own room at the hotel which was way out of our range and was told he needed to leave his room open for any wedding party members to use, meaning his wife and kids weren't welcome. I wasn't thrilled but it was his brother's day and I was trying to be supportive. Then came the expectations over the groomsmen outfits. A standard rented tux reasonably priced but brother-in-law wanted everyone to also buy custom, tailored suit jackets coming in at over $400. And also accessories. A pocket watch for another $200 and shoes around $150. And this is on top of a very expensive hotel room that no one besides my husband can use. I gently mentioned to my husband that we were far outside our spending budget and to see if there was any way to cut some of the cost. He tried to talk to his brother but got immediate pushback. His brother's exact quote was, you can't afford or don't want to afford. To be fair, we did have money in an emergency fund that we could have dipped into but chose not to. We had two small children and other expenses. In the end I decided to stay home from the wedding once Jane laid down her expectations for what myself and our children were allowed to wear, spoiler, very expensive and specific outfits, and we shelled out the cost for my husband's attire and hotel. But this has caused a rift that continues to this day. If we hadn't been so stingy, this never would have happened and we did technically have the money. And I do understand that this was a special occasion for a beloved family member. But it comes up at every family gathering and especially whenever we spend any money on anything remotely expensive for ourselves or our kids. We both have better jobs now than we did then. So, am I the asshole for limiting our spending budget when we were financially limited? Update. Thank you all so very much for your kind responses, support and brilliant advice. I will be sitting down with my husband and showing him the thread and discussing our plans for dealing with this in the future. We both need to learn to stand up for ourselves and set healthy boundaries for our sake and especially for our daughters. I appreciate everyone who took the time to reply. I consider this matter officially closed and feel so much better about it. Five years was a long time to feel so guilty. Thank you again two hearts. Not the asshole if it was so important the groom should have paid. My rule. Anything that can pass a good job interview can pass a wedding celebration. Not the asshole if you have to dip into an emergency fund to pay for a non-emergency, then you can't afford it. Not the asshole one. If the room should be free for the whole party, the whole party should have paid too. You should not have to use an emergency fund for a wedding outfit your husband will wear once three. If people put ridiculous and expensive demands in place, they need to be prepared for people to opt out. Not the asshole they shouldn't expect you to dip into emergency funds when you have two small children. It's baffling they didn't try to help when your husband told them your family couldn't afford everything. It's even more telling that your brother-in-law got aggressive over being told you couldn't afford it. Not everyone has a ridiculous hoard of money and your brother-in-law is the asshole for expecting everyone to spend money for his wedding and not allowing cheaper options. Not the asshole. I am so on your side. Dipping into your savings to go to someone else's wedding is crazy talk to me. Not the asshole. If you would have had to dip into your emergency savings, then you couldn't afford it. You shouldn't be expected to spend that much money to attend someone's wedding, in the first place? Not the asshole. Emergency funds are for emergencies not for ridiculous requests for attire that will probably only be worn once. A pocket watch? The fact that this keeps getting raised shows that your extended family care more about style and aesthetics over family. Out of curiosity, did all the wedding guests get told how to dress? Not the asshole. People getting married lose their heads a bit. But for them to carry on giving you shit about it years later is beyond the pale. Edit. Typo. Would I be the asshole if I stopped accommodating spouse's dietary restrictions? For the past couple years, spouse has been on a mission to lose 10 pounds. 
To accomplish this, spouse decided to cut carbs during the week. Spouse still eats carbs on the weekend, so there's that. I, on the other hand, love carbs. Rice, pastas, breads im. So do our young kids. Anyway, since we split dinner duties during the week, I make whatever meal that the kids and I want but always ensure that I have a carb-less version of the meal for spouse. This usually isn't an issue. When spouse makes dinners, it's always carb-free. Recently, spouse had a medical checkup and was diagnosed with high blood pressure. Spouse now wants to cut red meat, cook only with olive oil, have nothing fried, etc. Basically, just chicken and fish and veggies. To compare, our meal rotation includes things like homemade chicken nuggets, ground beef tacos, pasta bolognese, baked salmon with rice, baked chicken and steamed broccoli, and beef stews. Spouse wants me to accommodate these restrictions when it's my turn to cook. I think spouse is being unreasonable asking the entire family to make these dietary changes. In the alternative, I would have to cook entirely separate meals, one for spouse and the other for the rest of us. Look, we eat pretty healthy around here. Everyone is a healthy weight, and kids and I had checkups recently with no issues. Would I be the asshole if I declined to continue accommodating spouse's dietary restrictions? I feel like I might be the asshole because I wouldn't be supporting spouse's weight loss goals and health goals. On the other hand, cutting all this stuff from the entire family's diet feels like too much of an ask. Edit. I want to highlight that I have accommodated spouse's dietary preferences, needs. I added meals like baked chicken and broccoli, baked fish, cauliflower pizza, for spouse, regular crust for us, and stir fry. When I do taco night, spouse uses the filling as a topper for salad. It's all worked out so far. But the items spouse wants to ban are things the rest of us really like. We like beef tacos, not turkey tacos. We like pizza with real cheese, not soy cheese. We like beef stew, not chicken stew. Edit 2. I should clarify that I cook a lot of dishes from my home country, which are beef and carb and oil heavy. Spouse's restrictions would practically bar the majority of those dishes, which the kids and I love. Edit 3. Thanks for the comments, guys. I saw some good suggestions. I will encourage spouse to meet with a nutritionist for weight loss and health goals. I will also ask spouse to double up on certain meals they prepare so that I can freeze some to heat up on those days that I want to cook other food. On other days, I'll do a quick meal, baked chicken breast and veggies, for spouse while prepping the main meal for the rest of us. Edit 4. Okay, this is the final edit. I see that this is going 50% you are the asshole and 50% not the asshole. Obviously, reasonable minds can and do disagree. I don't think I'm the asshole, but still I see that spouse and I can come up with a better plan that works for all of us. Pretty much any dish requiring ground beef can be swapped with ground turkey. The only food you listed that was fried is chicken nuggets, and those could be baked instead. Cooking with olive oil is very common and healthy for everyone. Maybe on the nights you want to make stew, spouse could fend for themselves. You've already been making carbs on the side for a while now, and it sounds like cooking is a shared responsibility, so it's not entirely falling on your shoulders. These new restrictions are not over the top, in my opinion. So I think why WBTA if you suddenly decide to stop? Especially given it's for a health reason, it's not like your spouse woke up and decided the whole family needed to go raw vegan or something. Yes why WBTA in sickness and in health is part of most marriage vows. It's sad that you find accommodating their dietary needs to improve their health such a burden. Hopefully no more serious health issues requiring food prep affect your spouse or your children so that you're not further inconvenienced. Why WB the asshole? So exactly how long do you want your spouse to live? They aren't asking because the air being picky, they are asking for their health. Info. You're saying your spouse has been trying to lose 10 pounds for over two years and has not accomplished this in all that time despite a bunch of restrictions. If so, it kind of sounds like they're focusing too much on banning certain foods altogether as opposed to portion control and getting adequate cardio. You are the asshole. If your spouse has a health condition that requires them to eat a certain way, and you won't accommodate that, then you're showing you don't care about their health. There are ways to accommodate that without cutting those things entirely off the menu for the rest of you, but if your spouse can't have a nutritious meal in line with their health needs whenever you're cooking, yeah, you're in awe. Let me get this straight. Your spouse has a medical condition and you want to keep cooking foods they cannot eat because you're annoyed at their medical needs? Yes, you are the asshole. 
You should be helping your spouse stay alive and healthy, but it's so annoying because you like red meat. Guess what? Dietary needs are not always a fad. You even said the doctor gave your spouse this new diet. For medical reasons. Basically, if you don't support your spouse in this, you essentially want them to get sick. So yes you are the asshole. Not the asshole. I cook at home and for a living, and I think it's ridiculous to expect a table full of people to adhere to one person's diet. It sounds like you have already been compromising and going further means a totally one-sided benefit for spouse, and not a compromise at all. You're already preparing healthy meals for your family. Spouse can cook an extra chicken breast and steam some extra veggies on their day if tomorrow is taco night and they don't want to eat tacos woman shrugging medium light skin tone. Info. Have you and your spouse considered talking with a nutritionist? Based on what you've written it sounds like your spouse is basing her meal choices off of general recommendations for their weight loss and, now, BP needs. Talking with someone who could actually explain to both of you what changes you could make to your family's existing diet seems like a more reasonable option than making the kind of wholesale, but not necessarily informed, changes that are on the table now. Am I the asshole for not speaking with most of my family after my wedding? So, a last year I married the woman I've been with for 12 years. We were planning the event for a year or so, but due to COVID we had to make major changes at last minute. One of these changes was making the entire event significantly shorter, around 3 hours total after the ceremony, giving up as little as possible on all the things planned. Special gifts for our guests, dinner, fireworks, wedding dance, and a short party at the end. The entire event had to be done outdoors, due our country's special law during the coronavirus outbreak. My part of the family has the tradition on weddings of doing a surprise dance for the newlyweds. I assumed this would not be done on mine, for the lack of social distance. No problem with that. Days before the wedding, my sister-in-law calls me visibly nervous. Apparently she was on a secret WhatsApp group to coordinate our surprise. It was a recorded video of each one of them, separately imitating a movie trailer. Pretty cool stuff actually, but them all added up to almost an entire hour. She told my family that we had very little time left for non-planned stuff, but my family decided to ignore her and go ahead calling our wedding planner to fit it on the plan. Obviously, the WP told them that wasn't possible. A few hours before that, one of my cousins decides to bypass the WP and call me directly, telling me that the WP is too hard. The videos were a lot of work and we have to fit them on the wedding day. My now wife and I agreed that it was impossible to fit them during the dinner, only part of the wedding indoors, with access to a TV or a projector, but we wanted to see them anyway, so I told my cousin to take the videos on a pen drive for us to see them the day after. She tells me this is gonna piss off a lot of family members that put their hard work on the videos and wanted to see our faces while we first see them. I say we've been figuring out the wedding for months and their surprise we're gonna force us to give up on most of our plans, since there is no time for everything. I am so sorry, but I must be firm on that. Things were calm for the few days left. On the wedding day, I saw a few weird glares to me, and I overhear some mean comments, about my suit, the place, or the food. These things are pretty common so I decide to ignore them and continue to enjoy our day. During our wedding dance, I noticed that my part of the family didn't approach us, and while everyone is hard partying, I decide to approach their table. I say on a playful tone, Hey, I thought you guys were more partygoers. So my aunt coldly replies, and I thought you were more considerate, respectful, not a perfect way to translate it from Spanish. That was the last time I spoke to any of them. A few WhatsApps here and there for, happy birthdays, or so, and that's it. Actually I don't want to speak with them. Am I the asshole for taking all this too personal? Note. On the videos only appear my part of the family, not my wife's. Not the asshole. They made your wedding day about them. Not the asshole. Wow is your family fully of entitled, selfish assholes. They could have easily organized a Zoom watching of the video after your honeymoon. Nope, they just wanted the spotlight. Not the asshole. They were trying to do something nice and uphold a tradition but honestly they were told repeatedly that logistically there wasn't enough time. They knew this in advance. This isn't a talent show, movie premiere for them, it's a wedding. If they were so invested they might ask to throw another party after your wedding, honeymoon where they could show the video, but sulking through your wedding was crappy and childish of them. That video was for them not you. Lol otherwise they wouldn't be mad with your decision as long as you saw it. They wanted other people to see how much work they put in for you and to be the center of attention. 
Not the asshole. Weddings are long enough without including an hour video as a surprise. Especially since it wouldn't even have been about you guys as a couple but mostly you. Not the asshole. Your family tried to stomp all over your very reasonable boundaries with their overblown sense of entitlement. What you could have done was let them play their video, but run it on fast forward. Op to family why are you so upset? I agreed to let you show your video. I did not agree to play it at normal speed. Is it my fault that you were not more specific? Yes, I would have been that petty. Not the asshole. Too many people seem to want to make a wedding about themselves instead of the couple. If the couple doesn't want it then they need to accept it can't be done. The ceremony is for the couple, not the family or guests. Period. Everyone has been impacted by the pandemic and we've all had to adjust. It sucks they weren't able to carry out their normal tradition at weddings, but they should have been more understanding to the time limitations. To expect you to rearrange your wedding festivities and cutting it an hour short where you and your bride would miss out on the things you wanted on your special day, undermining you both by trying to alter it through your WP, being annoyed with both of you and making rude comments because they didn't get to do it is disrespectful to you and your bride. Not the asshole. 